And action. Welcome everybody, BMB Weekly, episode 139. It is 18th of October 2021. Huh? See, learning. I got it right this time. In BMB Weekly, we yes. talk about the latest in Microsoft 365 platform. And typically, we also have a visitor. And today, uh, we'll have a cool discussion with Andre. We already recorded that, so I know that it was really cool. So, uh, but is anyway. it though? <laughs> <laughs> But um, so uh, with Andre, we're going to talk about uh, the open source community, his background, obviously, uh, being a Portuguese, moved to Switzerland and then learning into um, the technologies and working there with the large customers and then over, uh, the, his contribution. So a lot of lot of open source discussions and why people are contributing, why he's contributing. So Andre has been one of the active contributors in the Microsoft Craft Toolkit. Absolutely brilliant work over there. Um, but let's not well on the intro too much let's jump on the discussion and then after that go to the articles so welcome Andre uh, to BMP weekly um I have no idea what the episode is one episode 139 thank you Waldek, for putting that in the in it says in the title <laughs> <laughs> so prepared yes always as always but uh let's start Andre uh quick recap on on who you are what you've done in the past and then let's talk about your current and present and future stuff after that but where what's your background where do you come from so uh thank you first of all, first of all thank you very much for for the invitation my name is Andre Lash I I work in Switzerland but I'm Portuguese by by my by nature itself I already live here for 11 years and uh, my background is uh, it's very similar to some of uh, of the commenters that we have at uh, on, on, that, on this side so <laughs> we I started of course with um, with uh, with the dot net and Microsoft and then I was presented with uh, with the SharePoint and then I really enjoy and really really deep uh, deep uh, I deeply understand the, the technology try to understand and in 2009, I went with uh, I, I got to the MVP, and uh, it was long, long time ago. And of course, um, and uh, I started to work with uh, with SharePoint technologies. Then, uh, then I have the call. Someone called me from Switzerland if you want to come uh, to work, and uh, I have the opportunity to work in, in the from 2009 uh, in Switzerland with. Uh, all really, really huge corporations, like more than 100,000 uh, people working there. And uh, I started in 2010 with PPUSD, and when I really was needed to start with SharePoint Online. And after that, uh, also all, with all the learnings with O355, I never stopped working on the on the outside from online. So it's really, really interesting work that I have. I work a lot with pharma, with banking, and uh, with a lot of NDAs, <laughs> that, to be honest, <laughs> I even say that even uh, overtake one to the other ones, and it's really, but we have very interesting projects, very interesting work regarding uh, SharePoint, uh, Office 365, and uh, all the constant evolution itself. It's uh, really, really interesting. And my first project when I finished university, basically I had to create SharePoint, but I did it everything with SP.NET, IAS, creating the database, the creation yeah. of the workflows, and the active directory. Basically, that was my basis. When I needed to make the transition, I fully understand the, the background. So yeah. this is a lot of my background I itself, and everything is going on the same uh, transition. And one thing that I always talk with my managers, I'm not only SharePoint, I'm Office 55 uh, solution manager and architect. Because this is something that people really like to keep the labels. No, there is a transition knowledge itself of service. Yeah, yeah. I think let's come back on that one in a second. I have to ask first. Um, you you moved from Portugal to Switzerland, and Switzerland is probably a quite different working culture. Can can you talk about the differences between Portugal and Switzerland as part of that change? If you remember anything out of it, it's already been a while. So yeah, there is a very good. Uh, should I be? No, there is a very good. You know, when there is a thunderstorm. There's even on the when it's in the middle of some thunderstorm, you can also have organization. And this is how we work it in a lot of, uh, in the Portugal, in the type of companies that I work at. There is always a thunderstorm that is around you, but there is organization. And this is a little confusing when you are working. Of course, you can adapt yourself, and, uh, but it's a very intensive and very different. When I was when I changed to Switzerland, I had to I have to change with a lot of cultures because I know five different languages, and it's not enough. 
because I don't know Polish, I don't know Hungarian, and uh, I have to work with people all around the world, uh, even for, from India. But the culture working with uh, in Switzerland is really more uh, uh, because I also work a lot with Germans, and Germans are very strict, and in, in the way of thinking and the way of working. But this is good because the way I was working in Portugal. I was like a, the seven instruments person that I need to know everything at any time. And I'm through to the lines that uh, you have to understand everything in the, very fast. <laughs> this, 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 uh, this was a very good apprenticeship because uh, this gave me a lot of uh, a lot of middle skills that not only cover the, the development itself, because you really need to have you, have you need to know how to make your communication. You need to understand what they are talking. You need to talk with a different level of uh, people that you are talking. You have the first meeting with the middle management. You have the high top that they, they don't understand anything regarding the technology, but you need yeah. to create the stories that will be able to understand. And of yeah. course, we need to have the, the technical background itself. And uh, basically, this is with using this component that I learned from Portugal. When I have to make the on the Switzerland, this is more organization. There is more processual, the more or process oriented. What is good, but also give me the leverage to fully understand the full of these concepts that uh, people also valorize it because okay, you are not only focused on this area. You can really understand the, the full concept and yes. also can give the good guidance. Like a, a lot, what you both also do with the with the community, you, you easily can identify who are the developers, who are the business process, and you can even put them together to know or to how to present the the, the technology. And this is also very very helpful, also for me to be able to fully understand the process itself. I think it's 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 one of those signs of a good consultant, or not necessarily a consultant, could be an in-house person as well, who can actually then adapt from developer to administrator to architect to leadership. But those are completely different skill sets, like you said. It, it's an interesting challenge for sure. So mm -hmm. yeah, and also oh, another aspect to it is that like oftentimes, especially when I look back, like way 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 back when 2007 2008, when I was younger, young still, uh, not so gray. Um, and I would primarily code for my work, right? So like oftentimes yeah. like at that stage, you would build something because it was cool and you couldn't really convey the message like why is that important to business, yeah. to non-technical users, right? And that's a skill that, evolved, at least with, with me over time, that the more you try to stop and think about, okay, so what is it that we're trying to do? What problem we're trying to solve? How is that whatever we're trying to build is going to address that? And these are these these things aren't really trivial to understand because then you need to have the empathy for users, business problems that they have, and then think through like, okay, it's so like how can we express what we're building and value that we want to add with this sure. thing? Sure. Exactly. And, and Actually, that even applies to the product and features what we do in Microsoft nowadays, being a, a person in the engineering, which is it doesn't matter if, if you do the best possible technical solution unless the end users understand and the customers understand the value that provides, and mm -hmm. which is actually an interesting. Quite often that gener can generate then frustration and you're like, why don't they get it? Why don't they? <laughs> That's exactly why I did my last example for not for the graph toolkit, but for example, for the follow documents. This is what I try to always to when I try to create an example, because I see a lot of technical small things that are of course very important. And the most people really, if you are full developer, you totally, you totally are on that. But for me, it's really to be able to identify as a business model or because that's really the one of the most important because technology you are going to get there. But if you are able to identify that something that can be uh, promoted as a uh, something that can be as a business or improve your efficiency on the work itself, that should be always your first step. Identify the context that you are working itself and technology will come later, but defining the process and I really fully get at this process and uh, when I changed to Switzerland, all this process working with German people, also the Swiss are very, how you say, conciliators, like uh, really like the main concept because there's always attrition. Some people are very strict with their ideas and they really can uh, conciliate and balance the, the different opinions. And uh, this is something that I could easily identify and, uh, and also getting out from the thunderstorm that sometimes is just very confusing itself. <laughs> But it's yeah. a cultural thing. It's just a cultural thing, and you can easily identify. And another thing is when you work with so many different companies and 
from around the, the people, you can know five different languages and, and it's not enough at all. At all. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can barely pick two languages, which is so, <laughs> so I'm, yeah. I'm pretty, pretty jealous about that. So that's uh, really it's, it's just way it's too, too hard, way too hard. <laughs> Yeah, you should try Finnish. No, just kidding. Um, no, um, I, just... I have some Finnish friends and Polish. I don't want to learn it. It's really complicated. <laughs> I don't want to learn <laughs> I don't Sorry, that. Sorry, no, 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 no. It's it's understandable. I think, yeah. Anyway, let's not let's not talk about the languages that are at least Finnish. <laughs> There's no point for that. C, C sharp, TypeScript. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. Um, <laughs> now, um, let's we talk about if we let's jump first on the on the contribution side you mentioned that you you're creating samples and and you contributed a sample and you also contributed in for example in the microcraft toolkits you contributed some of that stuff can you talk about first of all what you've done and why why are you spending your own time for helping others why why are you doing this that's crazy <laughs> No, it's not. But still, no, no, uh, no. I, we, with the question of the contributions, uh, every started I think was in 2008 when uh, you make it the first repository of um, of the of how to create the the extension for the SharePoint uh, solutions. And I remember there was a repository there. And again, on that time, on Coldplex, I was right? The one, I'm sorry. The, that was on Coldplex still, uh, That was Coldplex, still, yeah. right? The add-ins. No, no, the add-ins. No, no, no. Still on the PNP. The add-ins that was made at, uh, for the extension. So the SharePoint yeah. add-ins itself, and yeah. uh, but not from the Coldplex. Uh, so from that moment, uh, I contributed with some uh, JavaScript management uh, and the old way of uh, people do it. And uh, I was imagining, OK, the way the technology is going, I don't know why if they are getting less less uh, server side or let's say still there, still needed definitely for a lot of other reasons, but everything is going really on the client side uh, point of view. And there was always a big challenge because everybody was questioning security, 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 and security regarding the client side. But in the end, right now is where everybody's going. Oh, and uh, I can understand why, I understand the, the value, uh, but uh, from this moment, and I always try to follow very, very closely. And then in like in the beginning of this year, I started with a contribution regarding the, the SPFX reusable control. And I wanted to start to learn because I see the value, I, I have the need. And, uh, and I start to see and say, okay, uh, I have my background regarding this part. I know these uh, controls. I can reuse them. So I will start to to really to, to really start to use it. And then, okay, I need this. I need that. And I need to start to, to start slowly to compile. And then I learn it the hard way again. Hit five, if we debugging all the yeah. normal stuff. And That's then how you learn, I, right? Exactly. Not by reading, by actually doing. Quite I like actually doing plus the well, videos that code. really helped me a lot. And uh, <laughs> and uh, if not, believe me, I I think Microsoft went with a really really nice way now, like bombarded us with trainings and documentation and all the everything regarding this topic. And definitely it's a really good, good job. And I think I'm a good case that I really pick it in a question of <laughs> of date, and I really learn it strictly fast. And then one day for the graph tool kit, for the graph tool kit, I was a, a tweet a going with a scroll on the tweeting, and then I saw a tweet from uh, from Bet regarding we have a, a preview of the Microsoft uh, uh, graph tool kit file list. What is that? No clue. I clicked there. I start to dig in, I start to explore and try and uh, try to compile. And I say, ah, oh, this is great. De definitely I can reuse this uh, for uh, for creating an example on the PNP. And that was how I ki really kick started. Never work with the Microsoft <laughs> Graph Toolkit. Never never make an example uh, to the to the PNP uh, team itself. And I say, okay, I see the value. I can see how I can introduce. I can learn two technologies at the same time. And uh, and then I started to get uh, really get in, and why I really do it, I think it's really to improve the solution because uh, again the combination of the business and if you if you are able to keep the right tools and to become it really easy and this is exactly the the, the what the effort of the teams uh, that is from the PNP is try, really try to do it become really easy to the users. I don't say low code, but because we're still far away from that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we are. But but at least try to to 
because people really like to argue, then stop complaining and pick your stuff and really do it. <laughs> and uh, this is how I work. Yes. And this is how I work because yeah. this is exactly what you, you are to do and uh, also the teams. Okay, no no more complaining. If you really want to do it, let's uh, compile it. We yeah. have meetings, we have talks, and we go we go with, uh, deeper on this understanding. And this is how I really started to end, uh, and make the presentation regarding the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. And the second part was here, Mr. Valtek. He make a request on the <laughs> he make a request on the Microsoft Graph Toolkit to have let's have an upload control on the Microsoft Graph uh, list. And I say, oh, okay, that's interesting. So again, I'm not a person who waits for nobody. So I start to create the, the use case. I start to create the PUC the, and everything else. And uh, the team say, you want to pick uh, uh, and to create this control? And I say, yeah, definitely. I will be. Uh, I, I see the value, and I think it could be a, definitely a good value itself. And uh, and then I started to create the control. We have some meetings internally, and here the Microsoft Graph Toolkit are very open to to have the the, the teams, and they they help you with the with the design and with the meetings, yeah. and they are very clean, uh, open to to have this communication. Plus, what I also identify as a big value is also the ability of the connectors because can be used for, especially with the connectors to the, to the logins and to interact with the other platforms. This is the, the really the big value I have. Uh, I see it there. And with the last release, with the single sign-on capabilities, this definitely makes the, the integration super easier and uh, to be definitely extendable. And here yeah. is where I can see, okay, I, I think I got on the right moment. Uh, I, because I can see, I understand the concept, I understand how it's built, and uh, with these capabilities, just I don't really need to be strict on the on the Microsoft environment itself. And yeah. what I see is a lot of my customers have a different platform from everywhere, uh, and then uh, we just need to be in the middle, guys. We need to communicate, and you need to send it here, you need to send it there, and uh, this is exactly how we should proceed. And uh, with the uh, with a connector from uh, from the Microsoft Graph Toolkit, definitely will make uh, this life a little easier itself, and that's why I really see the big value there. And I think, yeah. oh, that's really nice to to contribute. Now, Andre, um, something just to recap on what you said, of course, is that just oversimplifying things. Of course, the the fact that Microsoft even asked for the contribution uh, was a big thing uh, and basically called out that these other things because some open source projects don't do that, and then it's like, well, how would I know where to even start and how would I contribute if there's no clear suggestions? So right, so that that helps on so it's kind of a learnings for the for the other open source um, projects as well. And reaching out for the community and offering uh, the help is a big thing. Communicating. Huge yeah, thing. exactly. Don't. It's really a question about uh, think on your needs. It's don't be yeah. afraid of to ask. The, the the worst answer you can get is a no, and then you just make yes. it, uh, the question again until they get yes. That's something that you should never <laughs> stop. Yes, <laughs> that's yes. a good way. That that is absolutely a great open source project learning for sure. Um, and especially so. So one of my good example, which we talk quite often uh, in in the PMP team, is is for example PMP JS, which I know that you know, Andre, what is a PMP JS. But I still remember when uh, Patrick created that. It took a long time for people to catch. What is this? Why would I care? And now everybody is using it as as long as they're hitting the SharePoint APIs. But it mm -hmm. really took a long time, and now it's getting contributions. Now it's getting a lot of usage because they didn't give up. They basically kept on repeating and improving and sharing information and sharing samples and just constantly consistently just pushing forward, um, which is a which is an interesting challenge, of course, for these open source projects. When do you give up or when do you actually keep on pushing? So, but thank you, Andre, for jumping in on a craft toolkit. You're an awesome example on, on what can happen when you keep on pushing because your controls and Simon Ockren um, contributed on the latest version of craft toolkit. The primary new things in that version were from you and Simon, and that's pretty groundbreaking. It's, it's really, really cool. No, yeah, no, and also definitely. cool. Like, 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 like it was the first thing you helped, right? Like, so, or that was the uh, first time you helped, right? Right on toolkit. On the toolkit, yes, or definitely. Not. It's like I said, and only yeah. picked because was uh, I saw a reference on on Twitter, nothing else. And yeah, uh, yeah but it's I mean, like still, a, right? I so, so I mean, like from from all the different things you could do, like there are there are there were requests for small adjustments or things. 
you chose to pick a new feature like that requires UI, that requires spec, that requires like you didn't pick the most trivial thing. So like it's this one plunge into the deep. You know what? I'm gonna do it. I, I've never worked with this thing. I can can compile and build it, but that's about it. And then I will just take the leap of faith and do it. And you did it. You work with the team. You shipped it, and you added a new feature to a Microsoft product. How cool is that? <laughs> the problem is people can then if they complain i am always listening and i should be quiet until i can jump in when they're going to use it no uh, because the pro the, that's the, the interesting part because i know who are the people who are using i work with these type of corporations i know that microsoft will recommend these tools and the the, the i know that they will, will use it and if they have the right guidance, because then people really who contribute here really knows about this stuff, about the, the, the technology. And here is you have one big opportunity because it's there, it's out there, and it is a ability to, to be readable. It's again, it's how you identify from the what is given from the business process and how we're going to use it because Microsoft is promoting and you'll be one and you need also to see the value there. So using that capability with your business skills and with your software software development skills, you just need to, to talk each other and it's all available. If you can improve it, don't don't waste your time complaining. Just to talk with the right people and do it and uh, that is the and right really approach. go for it. That is the right I'm not approach. A, I'm not a, I don't I don't have too much patience. <laughs> but now, now, Andre, I will. Sorry for coming back on this because this is one of the the interesting discussions for sure. In a global global um, uh, scale, there are different cultures, there's different mindsets, and everything else. Uh, how did? You, what is your mindset? Why did you want to contribute to this centralized thing, and not build your own and just use that? What what is what made you actually to keep it available and share it to everybody else? What what where does that come from? Uh, the, the, the ability to, to share and it's the ability to improve because uh, what we what we we for example what we we, we learn it we, if we are building if even if you, you are using something from uh, from a private uh, it's always going to find issues and here is the ability to to really improve and to really correct itself because uh, we're going to use people we're going to promote what I identify is you have different layers of how you going to promote the framework? And for example, the PNP comes normally from the developers to the management. Yep. No, it's very rare that you have from the management pushing down to the to the to the developers itself, unless someone really is more techy on the middle management itself. Here is exactly the opposite. You use it, you know that will be improved, and this can be uh, reusable. And uh, pe people are going to use it. The more you're going to use, more is going to be improved, and more is going to have the visibility to be yep. improved. And then I have consistency. What is the what is the big issue? So we need to make deployment. We need to continue the, the continuous integration, continuous development. We need to rely in what is already being uh, built itself. And uh, if we don't fit and we don't improve, it's the solution because it's going to be. If we pick something, we we'll, we get have to be for the next five to ten years at least. And we need to be very consistent on the on the development itself, and also on the packaging and the deployment of the different solutions. And uh, again, the change of the business will come, but the, the the solution will be improved. So it's very important that what we do, what we improve, and that's why on the community, you're going to use it. The provisioning of from the script will be, uh, and you can see from the different layers that are happening right now. This is consistency, this is continuity and improvement. And uh, they are more open if they, we need uh, to get some correction and some uh, fixing, yes. like, for example, the last one from Valdek, that's from the CLIs, some open questions. And this is the direct question that we should ask ourselves, how do we can we can improve it? And this is uh, how, from from my point is, when I do it, I do it to share it, to also to that other people can contribute it, but I'm also thinking to my own work, because people yep. are going to use it. And uh, it's not a, it's not a question about egocentric. It's about the team itself. It's about the consistent itself, and about the improvement itself of the what of the, the solution that we are delivering. Everything is perfect. No, can we improve it? Yes. There is patience for that. Eh, not me. Maybe another person. But uh, that's <laughs> another topic. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, as we as we build the same product together, we learn from each other, like you said, and then then it's the same 
peace. So somebody fixes something, you'll get it that fix as well. That's that's the beauty of the open source if it if it truly works. So it if it's actually works. being yeah. Because if, that's if, that's the, the, the biggest the biggest challenge is really consistency, like you normally also like to say it. The yep. consistency is not leave it for free. That's what's called libertinage. And we don't want that. We need control, like always. And uh, between anarchy and to have it, uh, some type of uh, process, definitely the process will win. And uh, this is exactly what uh, you, you're both doing a good job on this topic, because you cannot leave it Thank to you. anarchy. And this is exactly what we should uh, focus on. <laughs> That's actually yeah, a good way of putting that. So is the, if, if there's one thing that I learned uh, managing um, CLI from Microsoft 365 over the last four years or so, it's exactly that. Like you want to have a balance between the control. Like you don't want to be too rigid, right? You want to give people the ability to choose because it's open source. It's like nobody's employed. Nobody, it's nobody's job to do it. So people do it and they contribute of, of free will, right? It's their free choice to choose to spend their time to do that, right? So in a way you want to give them free choice. Like do you want to help with Docs? Do you want to help with tests? Do you want to build new command in an area? Do you want to improve things? Like pick your thing. Like if you want to help, this is the set of things we can do. But it's a finite choice, right? Like if someone would say, like, "Yeah, let's rewrite it in Python," it's like, "Yeah, that's cool, but that will not work," right? So there is the control. There is <laughs> um, boundaries within we which we work, but within there, we also want to give people room to choose which area they want to do, because maybe they want to learn new API. Maybe they want to yeah. learn how do you manage teams with the API that is exposed on graph, right? So yeah, we have commands or we have need for improvements in that area of CLI. And if they want to do it, it's there to pick, right? But it's still within the uh, limit that we draw, right? So we have this limit or, or we have the balance between like we are not, it's not anarchy, but it's also not too rigid. It's no. it's it's really the middle ground. But that, that is a hard thing to define for sure. Sorry, Andre, but it, it's it's really hard to find that right balance because we see projects which fail it because is. the person doesn't give it up. Um, and you need to give yeah. the freedom for community to actually build stuff together and creating a team for scalability. Um, but it can't be anarchy as well. So it's it's an interesting challenge for sure. No, no, I definitely, I fully understand, and uh, this is a, based on our years of experience, we can easily identify this uh, as something that is definitely a way that we should keep it, keep the freedom to the developers because they want to have their own self-expression and self-pride, let's call it like this. Yes. <laughs> and uh, but uh, autonomy, the, right? The autonomy. Is, I'm sorry. Yeah. Autonomy. They autonomy. want to have autonomy, right? So they want to be able to choose what they want to do. They take initiative. It's their, their choice. They are not being told to do this. Yeah. They choose to do that. Yeah. And uh, and this is also the message I think I see from your side that uh, not, uh, please don't, it's not a question of uh, you just do the, the, the job. You What you are really contributing is really to improve and how you can deliver your own solutions itself. So the, the liberty of uh, have the control, understand what well, on the deliveries, Plus, I think here is where you also slowly are going there, the ability to create solutions, because people are also motivated by goals. And the goals not only yeah. to create the controls, is that the only, the controls are only one of, uh, from the milestones, that's a baseline. <laughs> that's called yes. like this. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And uh, in the end, the milestone is where we should, uh, should end it. And people are pride. People are really pride when they contribute it and they can share it. Yeah. And with the business proposals on the top of that, plus the platform doing, Okay, this is exactly what we wanted to achieve, and uh, people really feel the pride itself. It's really a combination of different uh, factors, and we are talking but about guess, people always. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I guess it is also a need that evolves over time. Because if I look back at the younger me, it was just cool by itself to build stuff, <laughs> and then over time, as you've built a number of things, you're like, hey. But why am I doing that? Like, what purpose does it serve? And that's a need that evolved over time that, as you say, you don't just want to build things. You want to build things and then you want them to be used. You want them to be understood. You want them to fit into a context, into a, a problem that people have, right? So you want this next level, like you basically raise in the layers that you want to achieve. Like, it's not enough to just build because you know you can do that. You've proven that time and again. So why? What problem? problem does that solve? And then as you get more and more experience, I believe 
we choose to pick more challenging issues, more open-ended questions that we want to solve with our work. What and exactly and this is what I learned about uh, about the uh, pathology of uh, understanding the human being and it's about uh, we are we are like a pyramid of needs. You know, we start yeah. with the very basics, that's the uh, food and all these things. Development is a little bit about that. It's the rest, the first layers that of of what we need to fulfill that we still we need to feel uh, comply with ourselves. And uh, this is something that uh, I, I do identify as a human being. And this is what makes us also ourselves realize, not only delivering the work itself, they also as accomplished as a person, because we really de delivering something that people are really using. The impact, of course, is very tiny itself because we do some small things, but the combination itself has an in fact, uh, important factor. The yeah. ability to use all these solutions that we are out there we are impacting the organization and we are impacting their own working of collaboration point of view. And uh, this is exactly the right of type of work. And again, again, the work that you do it with the solutions, with the trainings and all these things, uh, just keep the ability to, to easily and fast to understand how this can be delivered itself with a combination of uh, good business uh, analysis plus with the development itself, you can easily de deliver all these things. I'm talking about graph, I'm talking integration with other platforms. Just choose it because the what is already there is already a bunch of service. Use it and use it wisely because sometimes, like, like you said at Valtech, we so if you are starting, be understand that before you develop something, see what is out there, and then sure. because that's so that's so important sometimes the mastering and the mentoring because when I, someone new, very new is coming, it's very important. This is also what I learned from here in Switzerland. You need mentoring because they start to work at 14 years old here. Yes. <laughs> and uh, they need a lot of mentoring. I already have some people the they they just, they, we, what, what did you know on 14 years old? So you know something about emails. And uh, and what they want, some are very techy. I remember one person that was super techy and I say, stop. First, try to understand what you try to achieve. Try to understand what is out there. And if nothing fulfills what your needs, then you start to create it by yourself. But before, try to what is out there. You're going to lose, you're going to earn life of your, of your life with that. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's, you mentioned the pyramid. It, I think it's Maslow's need of uh, the, yeah. the Maslow's uh, pyramid, pyramid of needs. Need pyramid of needs and and that actually applies on even on understanding even um on on what you were saying andre that stop try to figure out what's available educate yourself and then you can know to a following step of pyramid well that's something else than maslow's pyramid but still the mental mindset is similar so um, but in the pyramid of needs coming back on the on something what you said andre which was super super cool as well is that quite often we have our day job um, and we work from eight to four or whatever, nine to five, or some of us do, I don't, um, I'm pretty weird uh, working hours, <laughs> um, but it's it's on top of that work and on top of the family and everything else, there might be a need of getting accomplished, need of getting acknowledged, need of getting accepted, need of getting noted. And, and all of the open source and communities is for sure there to do that as well and enabling people to feel appreciated because every now and then, Maybe the work is boring, but then you get to do something which is like, hey, this is cool. I'm working with these people across the world in this pandemic world, post-pandemic world, still where everybody is working remotely. We don't see people, but getting that peer-to-peer -peer acknowledgement, that's worth of gold for sure. So. No, no, I, no I, I understand. And uh, yeah, I, this is what I'm learning from uh, Working with this type of technology and also with Microsoft for I don't know more than 15 years already. It's time flies. That's crazy. <laughs> time <laughs> flies up. <laughs> now we've gone quite a long time again on the on the discussion, which we quite often do. So, Andrew, any any uh, any last uh, stories uh, which we want to call out uh, on your if if let's say I'm going to feed a question or a a topic. If there would be a person in the community who's coming as a new person to the community, what would be your recommendations for learning? This this, this cloud thing and Microsoft 365 over 365 is massive. It looks so big. It's really hard to understand. How, what Any tips for new people to onboard? Definitely. Uh, so first, like I said it before, 
try to understand what are we talking here. First thing is to pick uh, the the first license for free for students and try to see what is the current service that is providing. First, you really need to understand the, the higher level itself. If you really want to have a deeper knowledge or you need to respond to some specific needs, then you, we start slowly going down. And here are the trainings. Plus, uh, because even before we go to the to the community of the PNP, you need to go by the trainings. You need to choose what type of technology you needed and based on the business that you need to respond. So we have Azure uh, or functions. We have uh, we have uh, power apps. We have flow, uh, not flows, power automate. Oh, you see how old I am. Uh, <laughs> um, I think they're still called With flows. power automate, you build yeah. flows. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we we need to understand this layer, and then when we don't, when we need really to make a lot of these developments that are not given by out of the box. First, you need to go by the trainings that Microsoft delivers regarding what type of technologies. If we want to go with the C sharp or with the with the Node.js. And then we try to go with the examples that Microsoft is giving, like the explore of the graph APIs, go with the trainings, because there is a lot of training. And this is something that I saw that Microsoft improved a lot. Uh, it's not anymore a PDF book that we need to read from the, the page one to the page 578.5, uh, something like that, to identify exactly the line that we are looking for. And uh, the following the, the document, it, they already give you the enough uh, leverage to understand the main functionalities. And then you really want to go deeper and you really have the need and the, cap the capability and the uh, this uh, this uh, need of uh, delivering something to create your thing and you are bored of your work but you love the, what you do you can go to the community itself and really express uh, what you need what you learn what you want to provide to the team to the te team itself and this capability of m mentoring is also can also come from you and also the community that is really open to you so you're not going to the i'm saying the best guys will not give you not going to bring you down they're going to give you the right guidance itself. So don't even be afraid to make the questions. Like I said, it, I'm very annoying. I question a lot and uh, I get normally my results uh, well, the, the way I want. So <laughs> don't don't over don't over question, but the ability of making the questions, you, if you don't understand, just make the question. Don't be afraid to, to make the question. I think that's the most uh, what I see. People get a lot of afraid uh, because of everything. Just make the questions. If you don't know it, don't know it. I, someone needs to start somewhere else. And uh, this is also what we learned from the other technology, even from the SharePoint, where I belong. I never go, I never, when a developer came to me and say, where, sh where should I start to develop it? No, understand what comes out of the box. Then we go deeper. And this is uh, always the same. The, the training is always the same. Get a good mentoring person. Don't try to do redo the, the wheel. It's already done. Try to understand what is already given to you. Make your life easier. It's always you like the, the the CEO of Microsoft say, make your life easier. Not not over complicated. Yeah, that was really good. And the question is um, always don't be afraid of asking questions. That's how we learn. That's yeah. how we understand what we don't know, and then other people can help you to succeed. Really, really yeah. good. Any anything la any last things from you, Valdek? Related on conclusions? Anything? <laughs> No, enjoy the day. Very cool. Have a great yeah. week, everybody. Yeah. We talked already way too long, so. Yeah, I know. I know. But thank you, Andre, for joining us. Really great discussion. And, and, and thank you so much for your work on the on the samples and, and the contributions, BMP controls and craft toolkit. It, it's been absolutely amazing to see that. A lot of, lot of great stuff. So. No, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's a, it's a long work. It's not the f first thing, but uh, with this new technology, definitely, I earned I earned again the the life of uh, doing this type of work. Then because I was a big stop for me from some time, but uh, yeah, that definitely. And thank you for the also the invitation again. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Thanks, Andrew. About time. Uh, <laughs> and for those who are listening or watching, uh, after this we're going to move the weekly article. So let's let's do a commercial break and. <laughs> commercial break <laughs> and move over there. <laughs> Thanks, Andre. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Two. So cool. Thank you, Andre, for joining us. Uh, as said already, as we close, so thank you, thank you. Awesome work and and really good actually discussion. That was really interesting um, as well. Um, a lot of 
Andre has obviously a lot of expertise on the on the historic background and historical things, and and it's good to see the excitement on the community. Good to see the excitement uh, on open source uh, areas as well. Um, should we jump into articles? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do that. So let me share my screen. So uh, we did want to have too many articles again today, uh, but let's start with a Viva Topics. Uh, so there's a, a Viva Topics news uh, from Chris McNulty. He's a director, marketing director, uh, related on uh, some of the Viva areas. And there's basically a Yammer integration coming for Viva Topics. And that means that the, the, the terms or the labels will be then also lighting up in the Yammer as well, So which is really, really cool. So we're really uh, integrating the Viva Topics as part of the Microsoft 365 platform. And then from the data, uh, we are auto-generating the knowledge, uh, what is it, knowledge, 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 Center, center, Pages, knowledge, knowledge, knowledge center. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, right, anyway, so the centralized knowledge center for the information. Um, it, it's really, really cool, um, and something to certainly. It's great that it's extending to Yammer side as well. Now, uh, thank you, Chris, on that. Then we had a uh, update from Bob German, uh, your colleague Baldek, uh, on building great bots for Microsoft Teams with Azure Bot Framework Composer. Uh, Good blog post on the new Microsoft 365 platform blog, uh, which has been relocated. Um, and this is basically an intro for the video um, of videos. I think it's five videos, if I remember correct. Six, oh, 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 seven, oh, it's too Whoa. many. A lot of stuff. But these are really good uh, short videos on basically explaining always the, the content and deep diving on things. And they are optimized from a length perspective. So they're not 40 minutes, they're rather uh, optimized for a quick view on that particular topic and then understanding how things are working. So really cool stuff. Thank you for that one. And Aika Bust is there as well. So really, really cool stuff um, and great guidance from Pop and Aika. Now, the next one was Grow Your Skills and Build Collaborative Solution XM MS 600, Building Application Solution by Microsoft 365 Core Services. And basically a blog post from Satya uh, related on that and explaining the different content and areas to concentrate and all of the different options and extensibility and, and learning paths uh, to actually learn things. And that's something what, what I, I think we've been doing a good job, even with discussion with Andre, is that there's a lot of, lot of new training material. Um, and so as you're learning for the certificates for certification programs or trying to get certified, there's actually a deep dives on all of the topics available for you to learn from, which is pretty, pretty cool. And Waldeck has been uh, finalizing the Viva Connection extensibility learn as well, but it's looking really, really good. Right. I was reviewing this earlier Thank today. You. You're welcome. Uh, now, uh, we also announced SharePoint Framework 1.13 release candidate, and this is with the Viva Connection extensibility, uh, improvements in Microsoft Teams side, and then of course, improvements in the SharePoint side as well. So the SharePoint portal extensibility side certainly will not go away. So just, just to be clear on that, uh, of course, we are doing broader capabilities, but then improving and increasing the quality of the baseline as well. So there's a lot of, lot of work being done uh, in the SharePoint framework for that. But basically, update on it. Um, you can easily get it installed if you do npm install, um, and that's the magical thing. Um, next, and that will install that. So we kind of release 1.13. Depending on when you're watching the video, within days. Uh, so, and now the release candidate is there as a final check uh, that things are fine, and then we kind of release things out. Um, and then we had a news from James. Okay. So, Microsoft Teams ISV app monetization capability is now available in developer preview. And these are basically the key capabilities being this one in here. So, you are able to offer a buy a subscription option. Uh, for your solution directly in the Microsoft Teams store. And this is actually really cool. It's going to streamline the end user experience rather than acquiring the solution and then saying, hey, this is a trial and go to my website to actually acquire that. So it's really there to streamline that experience. And a lot of, lot of assets being uh, published, documentation and the steps, how to get started on doing this. And then eventually you can have something like following where you can offer different set of subscription plans, and then people can actually acquire and check out and that, that whatever they've chosen to buy for, which is really, really cool. Great step forward on, on streamlining for sure the acquisition process in the Microsoft Teams store. 
Then we had uh, visualized lists with Power BI, the Intra Zone podcast, a really good podcast as well. So talked about uh, the fact that we can easily spin up Microsoft lists as a Power BI, uh, uh, which is automatically created for source. you. Source, yeah. So um, you can basically click a button in Asia Point list and it will then auto generate you um, an example Power BI uh, from the data. Uh, and then you can just, we can see in this case, it's a list called assets and you can see all of the different columns and types and values which are available and you can start drawing really the, the Power BI. And then of course you can expose this in Microsoft Teams or you can expose it in SharePoint or, or Viva Connection, uh, which is really cool. So easy way of, of using the SharePoint list as a uh, not temporary as a middle management Source. for presenting yeah. of the of yeah. the data. So of course you don't want to have a billions of rows in the SharePoint uh, in the, in the Microsoft lists. You want to have just the data which is relevant for your business and surfacing that easily there. But that integration is really easily doable with Microsoft Graph API or Flow or whatever. So really cool stuff as well. Now, Albert and Scott uh, had a run a Power App as an Edge extension uh, blog post uh, in the BMP R community blog, uh, which is really cool as well. So basically creating a, a Microsoft Edge browser extension of your Power App. And that's actually really cool. So you can easily do these kind yeah. of things as well. I wasn't aware that you can actually do this. So this is really, really cool uh, for sure for automating operations and automating operations and, and then easily expose the application directly in the edge. And that's that's actually super cool. That's really, really cool. Now, um, Tobias had a cool blog post from earlier today, actually, sending emails with Microsoft Graph using .NET. Um, a really kind of a baseline, uh, of course, blog post, um, but nice HTML emails being sent and, and walking through the different steps to how to get started and options and all of that. And so really, really cool stuff. And this is exactly the stuff that people are always looking for. So how can I achieve X and Y and Z? So with yeah. the permissions and all of that stuff, really, really great. Cool looking example as well. <laughs> um, and then uh, there was a new release of the BMPJS. BMPJS 2.10 was released uh, with the new updates on that. So Julie was leading that together with Patrick. Uh, so Patrick and Julie are the ones, the primary coordinators on this. And then of course there's additional people who've been actively involved as well. So thank you for that one. Really, really great to see constant evolution of the BMPJS. Now, uh, Michael Mendes had a kidding working hours and time zones for other users using Microsoft Graph APIs. That's actually really cool as well. So this is a yep. good way of building then an application where, as an example, you would be able to expose, let's say in Microsoft Teams, your Teams time zones and when they're working. And so you would quickly double check, are they working now before you ping them? So. Exactly. And I guess for you, that would be easy, right? 24 hours, just just. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's pretty complicated, actually, to set your working hours in the, in the, <laughs> for some people when you don't work between a certain you time. You just set 20, 24 hours. I, technically, I have that set, yes. Uh, so it's 23 hours and 59 minutes because you can't do it when 24. So in the. All oh, right. So you need setting. to take at least one minute off. Correct, correct. But then I have, personally, in my case, then I have sleeping times and family times also in a calendar, so people know when I'm sleeping. So that's the way I deal with that. So, right. Anyway, so that's the global world, and we need to be flexible when you have teams in China, India, and in, in the US as well. So interesting, but really cool stuff from Michael. Uh, so awesome stuff. Yeah. Then we had a blog post, Anand Ragev, uh, create an event page with SharePoint and lists. And this is actually really, really cool um, with SharePoint it Spaces is. as well. So how can you use the SharePoint pages to build a kind of a turnkey solution, kind of an experience? Um, and with the with a lot of, lot of extensive, or let's say not extensibility, configuration. And to make it looking pretty and step by step guidance on what can what can be done, how do you do that, how do you embed things, how do you expose things, how do you build uh, list formatting, and all of that stuff. So really cool stuff uh, for sure. How to make things happen. So and a long blog post. And it's really directly. extensive too, right? Right. Yes. I mean, it makes use of many different options like spaces, countdown, list view, whatever. Yep. What else is there? people list, attendees, or spe speakers, yep. so it's, it's everything there, right? True, true. 
true. This is really, really cool uh, for sure. So creating a engaging pages and experiences using the SharePoint pages infrastructure. So almost like a turnkey solution. And also solution. So no really custom really code, right? Because like, I think that, all of this, oh, I mean, no, yeah. Like it's all of the out of the box things that are available true. for everybody. True. Yeah, no code, just JSON. Wow, I mean, no code with, <laughs> with that. I mean, like no custom development in a way. Yeah, yeah, like, there's no absolutely. deploying absolutely. custom web parts. Correct, correct. No, nobody needs to approve anything. You can still make the the site look pretty uh, with the ex custom experiences. So really, really cool stuff. Yeah. Now, uh, then, uh, Damien, Damien Bond um, had a creating Bond. Microsoft Teams meeting in a, in ASP.NET Core using Microsoft application permissions. So basically, creating Microsoft Teams meeting with the Craft API and, and walking through that process. And this is a part two. So walking through that uh, step by step, talked about the implementation and all of that. And if I scroll all the way down, we can see a, a example application where you can actually create the meeting using then the Craft uh, APIs. So really cool stuff as well. Great reference for future and also uh, example uh, pointers in the, in the GitHub and other assets available. So great job on that. Um, Liam McCleary. Using the Microsoft Craft PowerShell for security alerts. So how do you do that? Um, so how do I get started installing and then uh, getting the scopes and then doing the operations in the security alerts? So really cool stuff as well. Great reference for future for anybody to who's looking into doing these things. Uh, Mark D. Anderson had a clean up unwanted site columns from content types and list libraries. And that's a great blog post reference, um, how to do that. Uh, so how do you go and clean up additional leftover columns potentially if, if something has left leftovers and then analyzing what's available, outputting stuff as well. So great reference as well using BMP PowerShell because well, easiest way to operate on the list level for sure. And then no. the last one, no, what's easier? <laughs> CLI. <laughs> really? uh, fair point. Matter of an opinion. It depends, so, right? Yes, exactly. All preference. Exactly. It's all the matter of preference. And then Peter Winstra had a seven reasons to use child flows in Power Automate. So how do you uh, run a child flow and why would that be in interesting? Um, so simplify flows as an example. So you have a explicit operation per a child flow rather than having a massively long flow. Yeah. So good stuff for those uh, who are using Power Automate or who wouldn't, um, but then designing those in the best possible way. So really cool stuff as well. Thank you, Peter, on that one. But that's it for the articles. So what's happening this week, Ardek? Um, Finishing work on Viva Connections Extensibility le yep. Learning Path. I'm um, hopefully it right we'll now. see Exactly, exactly. So hopefully we'll see that uh, go live really soon. Um, we released last week a few preview versions of CLI for Microsoft 365 adding new commands, improvements, new samples. So I'd encourage everybody to ch check that too. Um, other than that, there are a few more internal things on my plate. So stay tuned for more output coming soon. Yeah. And you? Things which we can't talk about yet. So the SharePoint yeah, Framework 1.13. Yeah, it's, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, SharePoint Framework 1.13 with Viva Connection Extensibility goes GA hopefully this week. Am I giving away too much? If it's not, then it's next yes. week. <laughs> um, so um, hopefully it will happen this week. Uh, so, um, but let's see. That's the objective. But again, if we find something on the later to start later in testing, then it might delay some of the announcements. So it's it's just a matter of software development. And hopefully, if we that's always the interesting thing with SPFX as an example. If you find a bug, is the bug in server side? Is it in, in the client libraries? Is it on which or is it hosted in CDN? Because rolling some of that stuff out can take up to two weeks worldwide rollout. So unless it's a super urgent then it has to happen now and then there's ways of doing that but well, then but still it yeah. takes time like it, yeah. it only proves the scale of things it's not just like you press a five deploy to azure and it's there no it takes yes, yes. it's a scale yes. it takes time yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's that's actually really, really cool because then, of course, the Viva connection ACs and all of that is going to go then GA. We're helping now partners on the submission pipeline. So we will have first uh, Viva connection ACs in the store pretty soon, which is really cool. Um, and then a lot of planning, actually future planning for SPFX. It's, it's, it's awesome to see 
um, a really leadership level commitment on this order hosted extensibility model as well. So because again, if you're an ISV, of course you'll do a SaaS application in Azure or AWS, and then you surface that into the well, you? 365. I don't know. Well, fair point. Um, but then, uh, fair point. There's, there's options. Uh, if you're building an ACE, it's going to be auto hosted in Microsoft 365 and then you take advantage of SharePoint Framework. But the future planning is, is actually really starting now for next calendar year. Um, and there's a lot of, lot of interesting stuff in the pipeline. But it, it's great to see the, we're getting now spin up additional teams worldwide uh, working on the SPFX and, and the, the related technologies and a lot of, lot of investments in there. So. Cool. And there is there's one more thing I wanted to add. This weekend, I totally forgot that. This weekend, I will be talking together with uh, Tommy Gollas and Stefan Bisser about development development for teams. So there will be the call up days, Bel Belgium and Netherlands, and that will be yep. on Saturday. It will be yep. a virtual event for everybody uh, free free to join, and the uh, three of us will talk about uh, developing apps for teams using yep. the new Teams Toolkit V2. Ooh, fancy. That is a really good yeah. set of tooling. So that's going to help a lot on, on simplifying things. Still in preview, uh, but getting there eventually for sure. But I think that's it for this week. So thank you, Waldek. Uh, thank you, Andre, uh, thank one you more time. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, and <laughs> thank you, Vesa. Uh, we'll be back in the, with the new PMP Weekly within a week. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.